Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome to Above Life channel. The purpose here, as always, is to inspire your spirit and to fill you with hope. Today, we're going to have an afterlife conversation with Ms. Marilyn Monroe. So let me share with you how I got inspired to channel Marilyn. You know that on Above Life channel, we have a playlist, right? I mean, you know that, right? Well, if you don't, now you do. Marilyn Monroe has a playlist because we've channeled her multiple times because I love her. Her energy is so sweet, so gentle, so kind. And she has worked a lot in healing. Okay, so from the afterlife perspective, she really has this incredible capacity for just love unconditionally, the true unconditioning of love. That would be Marilyn Monroe's energy from the afterlife. So we're going to have a conversation with her today. I, I was flipping through the channels on the telly last night and I came across a movie and I guess I was in the mood for a movie. I was kind of tired and I wasn't really ready to go to bed yet, but I was kind of one of those nights and I happened across this movie that's called My Week with Marilyn and it was set in I think it was set in Britain yeah it was set in the United Kingdom and it was about her a time when she was filming a movie and with Sir Laurence Olivier and so I'm sure it was fiction fictional you know loosely based on maybe some pieces of her life but fictional of course and so I watched it it was quite entertaining and it reminded me of how much I enjoy her energy however I'm going to tell you right now I feel this incredible amount of almost anxiety in the heart space so let's find out why I'm recording this video in July of 2021. It could be that the date is significant. It's July 16th at the time of the recording of this video. You might not be watching it at that time, but that's when I'm recording it. And I feel this tremendous amount of anxiety as I'm wanting to or feeling into connecting with her. So I want to find out, I want to find out what that's about. So Marilyn, hi. Nice to see you. Oh, you're so sweet. She's just so quiet, you guys. She's so quiet. And the desire to connect with you, extra nudge inspired by just seeing that movie. I want to talk with you about this heart space, this unconditioning of love and how you seem to really be a champion of that, like a master of it in the afterlife. She's like, oh, oh, Bridget, you're so sweet. She says, isn't she sweet? That's what Marilyn says about me. I'm not always so sweet, Marilyn. You know it. And she laughs. She says, oh, none of us really are. None of us ever really are. She says, I would love to. She says, yes, I would love to, love to, love to talk about love and the heart. Matters of the heart, she says. And it's not for relationships as you might think from my life experience she says okay so when i connect with marilyn it's really easy to embody her energy so you will see that that is one way that i channel i feel that energy empathically sense it feel it and i can just bring it right over me like a big blanket and i can share that with you so i will have mannerisms i will have gestures and things that are probably very much influenced by her energy. That's what it is. Okay. <laughs> she says, Oh, yes. Oh, my. And she drinks this. She picks up this big glass, like a goblet of just ice water, but it doesn't have ice in it. No ice. Very cold, but it's chilled, but no ice. No ice. She says, ice is not good for your teeth. You know, ice is not good for your teeth. She says, Cheers, she says, to good health, to your health. <laughs> All right. Symbolism, metaphor. All right. 
So the unconditioning of love, you are just pure love. Your energy is so compassionate in the afterlife, such a, a sweet soul filled with grace and forgiveness. You certainly have these qualities and traits as a spirit. From my channeling sessions with you previously, Marilyn, we have covered lots of topics related to your actual human life. So I'm, I'm interested to share with Above Life Channel about the empathic energy and understanding of love. And as you started to mention and talk about not in your context of your human life, relationships with the opposite sex and not in regards necessarily to, to understanding you from a human perspective historically, but us as humanity. Oh my, she says, oh my, well, relationships, they are very, they are a lot to handle, she says. They are a lot to handle, relationships are. And I think I've had quite a few, you know, she says. I've had quite a few as a person. And I can say that I don't really know if I've ever actually had a true relationship, a true relationship where I didn't feel like I wasn't quite doing my share or giving my, to the best of my ability, but I loved full out with all of my heart. And it seems as though my matches and my choices for relationship weren't always the most ideal in circumstance. Okay, so you're talking about, you are giving us a reflection on your life experience. So like your history, Marilyn, which I appreciate, and you know, lots of relationships, the key ones that we know of, you know, with the Kennedys, with um, Joe DiMaggio, with Arthur Miller, and th there's a lot with, with, with men, with, like you said, the opposite sex. <laughs> I think that's so funny, the opposite sex. And it... It goes to speak to our human minds connecting with relationship as this expression of like being married or having this long term commitment or being in relationships with others that are that we hope will fulfill us in some way or make us feel more whole or more complete, like lift us up, pull us up and I think that's a natural inclination for all of us. And I would love for you then to talk about that, like expand on that, what you've learned now in the spirit, in the, as a spirit looking back at life in general, and maybe for us as empaths, as heart-based people, and about the unconditioning of love. Can you talk about relationship in regard to that? Oh, she says, oh, oh there are so many types of relationships, specifically romantic relationships this is where we started isn't it she says isn't it because that's what most people want to know about she says is romantic relationships and you are right Bridget you are right we are always wanting to find something better that's why they call it the better half another part of you that makes you feel better about yourself and it's not it just never works out that way it starts all wonderful in the beginning where things are all giddy and and fun and there's a lot of attraction and that can last for a, a time and then eventually all the reality of life comes in and it it mm, okay so now her higher self is coming through which means a different variation of her that i can connect with as far as this mature evolved spirit not as much as her um, persona as we've been connecting with a bit here. And she says, the awareness that comes from, she's sharing this information as her higher self, okay? So she's gonna sound a little different. I'm gonna try to keep the connections between the two sources of energy um, connected, but I don't know how that's gonna go, so we'll see. She says, the... The realization of relationship in terms of oneself 
is something that is so deep and profound that in a human mind cannot truly comprehend or accept it. You mentioned the concept of unconditioning, and I think that's such a beautiful, beautiful vibrational match. It's an energy state. It assumes that there is love that exists in and outside of any relationship or connection between a human or, or any other energy entity, she says. Not just family relationships or platonic relationships, friendships or business partnerships. That's all she's, it's funny because then her, I can feel kind of her personality self saying, well, that's all marriage really is, isn't it? Is a partnership, a business arrangement. It sure seems like the men that I were, was married to had that in mind. And I can't say that I didn't realize that, but I was hoping every time I was hoping and hoping and hoping for it to become something other than that. The closest to that would be Joe to get closest to a real marriage, a real relationship. If only I could have had that. And we could make that work. And But then she says, but my love was for my career and for all of you, for all of my fans. And I felt so much love, so much love. I want there's such an appreciation. She has this huge appreciation, guys. She just showers you with loving heart energies. And I see like flowers. She's throwing flowers back at you because she had flowers thrown on stage for her. Throwing them back at you, just this beautiful appreciation. She felt love from you, is what she's saying. From you, from all of us. She felt it. She did feel it. So don't feel sad for her that she didn't have love. She had love. So from a higher perspective, let's go into the unconditioning portion and talk with the higher self, specifically the spirit, the evolved spirit of Marilyn Monroe, her essence. Talk to us about unconditional, unconditioning of love and how, what that means for us here as a humanity now here in 2021. <laughs> and she's the term lock, stock and barrel comes in like the whole of everything. She, she literally shows me piles and piles and barrels and barrels of things like goods, like getting ready to go onto a ship to be transported. Like she's like, it's all sitting here in storage, ready to go. Like you have all this love banked up and stored up. And to begin the process of allowing yourself to start to utilize that, start to use up some of that stored love for yourself is really the place where most of you can begin and moving past what you perceive as your uh, blocks, blockages, and I would say resistance, um, is something that does seem quite a task. It's almost as though like she's showing me like a, a big chain link fence and we see all these barrels and barrels filled with love or something desirable, right, that we need or want. And we've been saving them up and saving them up, but we can't quite get to them. For whatever reason, we can't get through the fence. It's locked. It's not the right timing. It's, we don't have the, the special code. We don't, there's some reason why we can't, we can't access it. And so that's like the blocks or the resistance that she spoke of. Is there a way that we can get, how do we start? So that metaphor is very strong. So how can we start to begin to unconditionalize love? How can we do that? Okay, so nice breath in, nice exhale out. And then I see Marilyn in her beautiful face and she says, to know that you are love. Do you know it? But do you know it? She says, that's one thing in my lifetime I did not know. I did not realize. And then she's showing me that reflected through the eyes of another, we can see back ourselves. And what we see isn't always love. We don't look at the times when there is adoration and love and, and beautiful positive energy coming toward us. We look most often in the reflection of others as a, a point of pain, like she's showing me like, like a trigger, you guys. So like other people reflect the negative of us, which really she's saying, we need to look at one another and reflect 
and allow ourselves to receive the reflections that are accurate of love because we don't do that. Hmm. Is it because we're trained to see the bad or is, is it because we're always improving? I mean, maybe we see, you guys, maybe we see our reflections as negative and stuff that we need improvement upon because we always want to improve. Maybe we're, maybe it's a self-development evolution kind of thing. Maybe it's something positive. And Marilyn's like, mm, that's a lovely thought, Bridget. And I'm like, but she's like, not so much, you know, <laughs> not so much. It's, it's not so much that. It really is this wanting to figure out what's wrong with you. And she says, that's how I felt. That's how I felt. And I share that with many of you. And it is hard to feel over and over and over again, so much pain and loneliness inside and feeling like you can never quite figure out what is wrong and then you can't fix it. So you look to other people to fix it and that's when you get into a relationship and that's when relationship becomes this conditional experience of love. It just makes sense, doesn't it? Yes, what about the relationships within ourselves, like our relationship with our mind and our thoughts, our relationship with our heart, our feelings and emotions, our relationship with our spirit. Like there's so many pieces that we can, our relationship with our bodies. There's really important relationships within ourselves. What about those? What about the conditions of those or the unconditioning of those? It sort of creates an independence, doesn't it? The, the concept of freedom, you know, freedom. To be free, to be free to be oneself is something that, that has been written about by poets and scholars for ages. But it isn't something that has been mastered. And why is that? Why is that, do you suppose? It is because there is no one to master you. No one. Even if you are in a relationship and someone else gets to make the choices or the decisions and you don't have to do that, that's taken off your, off your mind, you still then are not in, in the relationship with your, um, okay, so she's not using words like ability to choose and the power, but she's talking about um, the feeling I'm getting is this empowerment, like, you give your power to somebody else, they get to make the choices for you. And then what's left for you is this feeling of, well, it's nice not to have to make the choices because there's stress around the choices. But at the same time, what's left for me is me to work on myself or to take care of myself. And then like she says, self-care, taking care of yourself is something that is completely conditional. And it, most often people do it when they are unhealthy. And there's a problem and they have to fix their health or their body or or mentally or their mind or, or their heart if they're heartbroken. And there's always this fixing, this constant state of fixing, which means nothing is ever really full or complete or free. There really is never that that is never achieved. That's a big that's a big bunch of information, Mayor. Ooh. <laughs> How can we relate to love? Let's, let's say it that way. Because we've been talking about this expression of other people and how other people, other humans, which is important because we are humans and we're trying to live a human life experience. So it makes sense. We need to utilize that, leverage our relationships. That's how we learn, grow, evolve, and, and gain clarity in things. How do we relate to love? She says, I think it's about personal freedom. It's about personal freedom. And, and the choice of that is something that in a second, she's like, in a second, you could be free if you just choose the love. So is love something that we get, like a present from someone else, would you say? Or how would you describe it? Is it something that already exists as an energy from your like advanced understanding? Is it like that? She says, oh, I think it is. I think it's a warmth, she says, and it's inside you. And she like touches her belly, her low tummy, and she's like, it's in your belly. You know, it's inside you. It's inside you. 
But why that isn't enough, she says. Why is that not enough? Our own love inside of us. Why is that not enough? And she says, there is a, it seems like there is this need to share that. When you feel it so deep inside you, in your body, and there's a need to share it. And that's when you connect with others and you then go into actual relationship. Okay. So then how do we get back, not from the other person in relationship, but that feeling of warmth in our bellies that is love, that is just that pure, unconditional love? Oh, she says, but it is conditioned because it, it depends upon you knowing yourself being able to feel you and know your feelings and your feelings as different from other people's feelings about you or for you. You see, this is where it gets so complicated because the mind gets involved and then it becomes this whole, she's like this whole race of thoughts that are that you gather up and collect over time about yourself and most of them are not the happy thoughts the good positive thoughts there are all these other things because you want to be careful to make sure you don't hurt anyone else and when you're distributing your love and yet you know people will be hurt because it's kind of a natural feeling to have reflected back to you if there is a discrepancy or like a She's like, kind of showing me like an imbalance in any kind of relationship with expectation versus commitment versus understanding versus job, role, um, experience, past experience, belief systems, other relationships they've had, etc. It could be anything from a fan or a director or a person at a venue or a driver in the car that's driving you around, she says, or you know, family or friends, you know. <sighs> okay, Mayor, so I got to tell you, you're not really giving me a lot of positive feels, like warm feels about this whole unconditioning of love thing. And I thought, I thought the concept was brilliant yesterday when it came through. She says, oh, Bridget, it's not that complicated. It's really about perception. Everyone believes what they believe. And so the question is, is if you want to change things in your external relationships with other people, you have to recognize what is going on in your own relationship with yourself. And that does mean your knowing. And so her knowing is like intuition, you guys. And that's what she's saying that love is. It's intuition. It's this knowing yourself, the relationship with yourself, how you relate within yourself. And then she says, and that warmth can be used to help soften your mind so you don't derail yourself so you don't say mean horrible things to yourself and for god's sake so you don't believe that so you don't believe that if you're believing your own bad messages inside your mind inside your yourself then of course it's going to be easier to believe other people's bad feelings or she said feelings on purpose, heart, empathy. You're picking up on their vibes, right? Their bad feelings about you or what they say about you, the hurtful things they print about you or talk to other people about you or say about you on TV. She says, it's easier to believe that because if you're already doing that to yourself, of course you're gonna believe that because it matches your what you're already thinking. It's harder, it's much, much harder, she says, to think something different. She says, so the perspective, the way you look at things, the way you look at yourself is really where everything starts. And if you want to change things, the way you, you receive love, the way you understand love, the way you feel love, you have to let yourself know what you are thinking about love, how you are feeling about yourself and, and let yourself feel that warmth. That's a really good place to start and you can always start it's never she says it's never too late to start never 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 so love is a transcendent vibration i know this i really do know this i'm working on myself for myself embodying this understanding so 
empaths, which you are. Empath, by the way, if you don't know here at Above Lift Channel, empath means you're, it's a, also considered clairsentient. So it's the ability to sense or feel energy, which is most commonly recognized through emotions. So often a lot of the emotions that we feel and we take to heart as our own are really not our own because you're open in the heart as an empath. You're perceiving energy, you're receiving energy from outside of you, from relationships with your children, with your coworkers, with your significant others, with your extended family, all of that. And you're taking it in as though it is your own information, information from within yourself, and it gets all mixed together. And so it's important to use discernment, to let yourself feel your own feelings, which one of the things that I recommend for clients is to ask yourself in the mornings or throughout the day, or if you've had a particularly stressful time, or if you notice a quick mood change for yourself after you get off the phone with your daughter, et cetera, whoever it is, ask yourself, how am I feeling? How do I feel right now? Not about the situation, the condition, the circumstance, or the other person, but how am I feeling right now? How do I feel right now? So you just take a minute and ask yourself, how do I feel? How do I feel? And then you let the energy kind of open up and you will find most often that when you let yourself feel yourself, there is much more peace and calmness than you could actually imagine. Even if you're dealing with stressful situations, challenges with money, anxiety, health crises, whatever it might be, that's hard stuff, yeah? But how you actually feel, like you yourself, how are you feeling? Not about the situation, the condition, the circumstance, the person, etc. but yourself. You will find that you have a great deal, a tremendous amount of room for peace. Just calm, just calm. Peace or calm energetically is a great, a great energy to tap into for empaths. It helps keep us healthy. It helps keep us clear and conscious. And it's not hard to do. Inside you, you really have just pure energy ready to just expand and to wrap around you, to encompass you and enfold you. And that's the truth. Now that's what I call unconditioning of love, All right? Peace and calmness is one of the states of love. It truly is. All right, so thank you, my dear. You are so sweet. You are so sweet, sweet, very sweet to be here. Is there anything else in closing that you'd like to share? And she's like, Mwah! like, I love you all. I love you all. Feel me loving you, she said. Feel me loving you. You can borrow from my love, she says. It's so transcendent, you guys. It's like so transcendent. So thank you. I'm such a sweetheart. I so appreciate our connection. I so, so appreciate it. And I appreciate you here, viewers, at Above Life Channel on YouTube. I'm Bridget. Thank you so much for being here. If you are looking for more inspired videos to fill you up with hope, check out my Fairy Grasshopper YouTube channel where I share interesting insights, some psychic vlogging in real life. I talk about intuitive topics. I do card readings over there and just, just lots of interesting other intuitive and psychic things as well. All right. So remember, remember, this right here, right now, this is your life your life. So live it. Just live it. Thanks for being here.